Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to at t Stadium, home of the Dallas Cowboys, and this weekend, home of the 50th ACM Awards as well. I'm Lisa Lee with the Academy of Country Music, and I have the uh, great honor of introducing these guys up here today, um, five very talented and handsome guys, I might add. Um, that are very integral in making this um, show come to life this weekend. So first I'm going to start right here with Bob Romeo, who's the CEO of the Academy of Country Music. Good to see you. Nice to see you too, Bob. And then we have, of course, our intrepid host, Mr. Blake Shelton. Well, uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And next to Blake, of course, is Rat Clark, who's the executive producer of the ACM Awards. <laughs> and finally we have Jack Sussman, who is the EVP of specials, uh, music and live events for CBS. So these are the guys that make it happen. So I just want to start out really quickly uh, throwing a question to each one of them to get them talking about the event and then we'll open it up to questions for you guys. So Bob, let's start with you and um, in a nutshell, I know we've been talking about this show for a long time and coming to Dallas, but how did we end up in Dallas at 18 or in Arlington at AT&T Stadium? You know, a lot of people have asked how long this process has taken. And actually, we got a call from the Jones family six years ago when the opening of the building was scheduled. And they actually approached us about bringing the event here for the opening of the building. As we got into it, and since we're a live show, we have to go in July, and we realized the building might not be done. So we had to decline that offer. But from that meeting, we kept in contact. Uh, Jerry reached out, and we started a process thinking about, well, why don't we look at doing our 50th anniversary here? So that process started, and the governor, uh, back then, Governor Perry, was very helpful. We went through a whole process to get named to the economic incentive bill that uh, they have tied to AT&T Stadium. And because of that, and once we got approved and got a host committee to invite us, that extra funding really helped pay for what we're doing here. And I think for you that have seen the setup out there, it's a massive setup, and I think Rack will talk about that a bit later. But the process has been about a five-year process to get here, and I think when the people see what, what's out there, it's going to be quite an amazing show. So we're excited about it. Ladies oh, and gentlemen, Luke, Luke Ryan. Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Blake. <laughs> What special things are we doing this year on the telecast? I, I think we're going to have a really big night of amazing television. You know, country music is the biggest format in American music right now. And to be able to put that on the stage here at AT&T in this big house is going to be really incredible. We've just got some amazing performances. Rack will talk a little bit about that. We have the two best hosts on the planet steering this boat um, for three and a half hours on Sunday night. And I just think you're going to get a real opportunity to see some of the biggest stars in music of any genre do their thing on Sunday night. And we're thrilled to be part of the 50th anniversary. We've been in this business with the Academy since 1998, and we just want to keep at it and make this the biggest show you've ever seen. We've talked about this a lot, about the challenges you and your team faced about bringing our show from an arena to this massive and beautiful stadium. What, what were the biggest challenges you faced in kind of turning this football stadium into a, a concert venue? Well, the, the first thing is, how do you do an award show that feels intimate and bring in the scale of AT&T? You know, this, this show started when I first worked on it as a stage manager, production associate. It started at Knott's Berry Farm at the John Wayne Theater, a few thousand people. Then we went, everybody said, how are you going to go to Universal Amphitheater in Los Angeles? And that was a big deal. And then we went to Mandalay Bay and then MGM. And so it's always been scaled up and up and up. And this one, with 70 thousand people plus. We talked to our director, Glenn Weiss, production designer, Brian Stone Street, and said, we need to redesign this. We're not just going to take this show and plop a, it, an award show in the middle of AT&T Stadium. So when you get out there and you see it, we've brought an intimacy. We've brought the stars up on stage. We have two stages, and our artist pit is actually part of, part of the arena. We're really going to utilize the technology that we have from Cowboy Stadium, that massive screen that will help us. We took advantage of everything that they have here for us. And In other words, you're just using Luke's normal production for his, for his concert. <laughs> yeah, that big, that big production. <laughs> and we, it's, it's, more, it's going to be spectacular. I mean, I, when, you, when I stood there, we have a producer's table, and I looked at it, I said, oh, this feels like MGM. And then turned around and looked behind you. It's, it's massive. It's huge. Everyone, so far, we've done our first night of rehearsals. Everyone's excited, so... So far, so good. I want something to go wrong today, so I know nothing will go wrong during the show. 
So that's that's my goal for today. That'll Something be Blake's for her. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So guys, you this is your third year back as host. I know um, you know you you guys have kind of got this under your belt, this hosting thing down. But as Rack said, we're in a, in a in a massive stadium. It's a little different this year, and, it, and it's the 50th anniversary. It's a special year. How do you guys feel about bringing this to Texas and being a part of such an important year for the ACM Awards? Well, I. Um, Bob won't remember this, and, and you probably won't either. And Jack wouldn't even speak to me back then. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> years years ago, I remember going into the to the uh, uh, main office uh, for the ACMs, wherever it is in LA. I can't remember where it is now. Um, but going in just to say hi, I was a new artist, radio touring, and and just meeting everybody f for the first time. Austin was my single then, and I remember sitting down and meeting and, and just talking about it. And I remember back then there was a, there was a, a thought or an idea or maybe it was just my, in, in, in my mind, thinking it would be a good idea that the ACMs could travel the show, you know, and hit a different city every year. And now knowing what I know about television, that's not, that's not possible. That's not a likely thing to happen. And so that's why this is so cool to me. I mean, to me, Dallas, I mean, we could argue about this all day, but to me this is like the – the, the like the mecca of country music fans you know i mean it's just if you took a poll around this this area i mean i'm sure 95 percent of the people that live here are country music fans so it's cool to be able to bring this show this one time somewhere where it, you're hitting the the fan base you know right in right in the heart you know it's it's pretty cool and and being that it's the, the 50th it's cool to that you know that we're going way back and and honoring you know some of these artists that have been here like Taylor Swift and Miranda <laughs> Lambert and, and digging way back. I was giving Miranda crap about that. You you're probably an Icon Award guy too, aren't you? No, you hey, you're not. You're too new. <laughs> Luke, how do you feel about it? I apologize. I apologize for my tardiness. Uh, it's a lot of work getting prepared to look better than Blake. So uh, <laughs> we. Uh, <laughs> Um, you know, I am in, in the, the enjoyable part about hosting with Blake is, uh, you know, we're just still so amazed, he and I, uh, that we are had these opportunities, that we, that we made it in country music and that we can host such a big event and be a, a part of, a, you know, the 50th anniversary. And, and I, I tell you what, I, I remember when Bob uh, showed us drawings, you know, three or four years ago of the sketches of, um, um, I, I guess that AT and T Stadium was probably a year old then, right? It was. So, so um, you know, seeing the um, seeing the sketches and and, and having Bob uh, and, and everybody ask artists, well, what do you think about having to walk from here to here and here, and how long it may be? So I know these guys, um, Blake and I can go tour and and uh, do our stuff and roll in, but these guys have, have put a lot of work into uh, uh, so many behind the scenes people, I would imagine, and the fact that it's finally here is pretty uh, pretty exciting, and, and the fact that, that they turn it over to me and uh, uh, the two low, lowest IQs up here. Uh, <laughs> We're the only ones dumb enough to agree to do this. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I think, you know, Blake and I, our approach um, always going in, um, the, f the first two years were uh, Blake and I would come in and we we'd start trying to uh, you know come up with funny stuff to uh, to uh, roast people while we had the opportunity. But this year <laughs> it, it's a different vibe. You know we're going to you know we're we're just going to be. I don't even know if Blake and I will once the show kicks off we'll be in different area codes running around making this thing happen. But uh, it, it's about it. It is about. Um, Relishing the 50 years and, and and all of the icons that got us here, and I guess Blake and I, our approach will just uh, honor the show like it needs to be and and have fun, have fun with it. But the live performances? Hell no! I can tell you that there's no label and in, in this <laughs> involved with this award show that's going to let let that happen. That, unless y'all know something I don't know. Well, yours, we do any deal for you. Oh, was it mine? Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, I'll be the one. No, the live no sangria. <laughs> No, I don't think I don't think so. Don't forget Garth is on this thing, so no way. <laughs> you know, speaking of Miranda Lambert, she reached out the other day 
and told me to make sure w with you two guys on the stage, particularly you, that we have the delay in place. Because <laughs> as she said, anything could happen and likely will. Is there a delay on this today right here? <laughs> no. About no, six, no, minutes. six or seven minutes. <laughs> I got yeah, like when I got here? Yeah. <laughs> You're my worst so nightmare, you Luke. Time. You've got to be on time on oh, Sunday. Yeah, you, I was you, on time. <laughs> you must be on time. You know, Bob can have grand ideas. As long as we have time and money, we can go anywhere. The, the issue that we have is coming into a venue for a first time. We learned so much coming to Cowboy Stadium. I would love to come back because we know so much more now. Going and reinventing the wheel every year is what's really difficult. And that's... Uh, when we started this, and, and, and Rack's correct, there's no playbook. We, we, we can't look at another playbook to say, what's it like to put a show on in a stadium? When you guys go out there and see it, everything in there has been custom built for this room. So it's not a touring show, it's been custom built. So it's, it's to answer your question directly, yes, we have contemplated. And I think there's been some discussions with the Jones family about looking at returning every five years. And I agree with Rack. I think if we come back, we know a lot more than what we know now. So uh, that discussion has happened, and I think we'll know more after Sunday night show. You know, I, and, and to that though, I will say, if anybody can do it, I know firsthand that he can because he. Oh. We uh, was it, three, two years ago, I, we called Rack and said, "Hey, we want you to put together a, a television special for these tornado victims next week." And so, and he made it happen. So I know you can do it. Thanks, so Blake. just freaking do it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. That was 24 hours a day, six days. Yeah, that was great. I loved it. Like I said, time and money, we can do anything. Jack, you were going to say no, something? No, I just think what you need to be aware of is this has never been done before. There have been live concerts and live events from big football stadiums and other kinds of large, big-scale venues, but nobody's ever moved into a football stadium of this size and done a live three-and-a-half-hour music award show with 23 live performances. It's a daunting task, and these guys have pulled it off. And I think Sunday night you're going to see one of the biggest events you've ever seen for live music on television. What's our classification? What are we? It'll, it, it, I think, I believe, Brooke, where you, I think it's the world's largest televised award show. Most attended Most attended award Most show. To unattended. <laughs> <laughs> what if they, they did an award show and nobody came. Yeah. <laughs> That's right, exactly. Wow. Well, congrats on that. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. And when does the uh, Guinness Book of World Record publication come out so I can uh, <laughs> go on a pre order? <laughs> can you pre order it? <laughs> I'm sure we can get you one of those, Luke. We'll take care of you. <laughs> now, when they show it on the page of the Guinness Book, will it be Blake and I's picture, or will it be... It'll be Garth. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to be pissed that there's some record that he hasn't broken anyway, uh, so he'll, <laughs> he'll get it. L.A. has... Um, He's been getting some facials. We had a talk of, yeah, he's, he's hydrating early in the morning. He's uh, exfoliating, right? That's just once a year, it's natural. Okay. And, uh, but he, uh, he, he navigates, yeah, he navigates Hollywood quite, uh, yeah. He lets me, uh, when I'm in town for other stuff in L.A., he lets... He invites me to dinner and then allows me and my band to run up a seventeen thousand dollar bill at a high end rent. Nineteen. Nineteen. <laughs> yeah. So that's how he's changed. We went from uh, Bonanza Steakhouse in uh, in uh, <laughs> somewhere in uh, East Tennessee to now where uh, that was the Palm where you ran up the twenty one thousand uh, dollar <laughs> keeps going bill. Up. Yeah. Well, we can duke it out right now. We can just have That's a saying, Yeah, is Garth in that category? No. Oh, okay. Uh, I, I'm I, you, you know what? Saying Whitney Houston? No, I'm going to take the high road here and and say I do, <laughs> because uh, because Luke has a shot at other awards. It's about, that's my only chance at. No, I have a collabor. Oh, I'm screwed there too because you're because yeah, I'm in that Florida Georgia line. <laughs> this is sucky year for me. So. Thanks for bringing that up. <laughs> really, the only uh, good thing, you know, Blake is our, two hours from his farm, so he can at least bounce back. That's my award. You both um, are ACM Award winners. You've had a long history with this show. Um, what, 
so on a serious note, what are the special moments for you guys from your history of this show and being a part of the ACM Awards? The coolest thing that I have witnessed, and this is no kidding, was when Luke won uh, Entertainer of the Year because it, the reason, first of all, he just, not only did he not expect it, we both kind of expected Taylor to win that because we were backstage talking about it and it was like, oh, that's fan voted, man. Maybe next year, you know. And then all of a sudden, Luke won. And I was as surprised and excited about it as he was, you know, to finally get – because I've known the guy since, you know, since he had his first single out and, and watched his career develop. And it's cool to see good people have good – great things happened to him, you know, and, and to witness that, it was it was as special for me as almost as it was for him. So. Blake, you've also won Song of the Year, though, with Miranda. Well, I, I mean, I, as far as things that have happened for me, that's by a mile, you know, the most important. If I, if I could she take away all of, of that song. <laughs> she did. She did. She literally <laughs> put my name on it. But if I could take away all the other things that I've ever won and just keep one, it would be that one. So Yeah, that was uh, – that was an amazing moment, and yeah, I'll you know I remember obviously when when Blake and Miranda won that, and and how special that was for them. And uh, yeah, I, I never will forget um, being backstage with Blake. It, it was an amazing night because it was the first, you know, it was my first award show hosting. And Blake will tell you, I, you know, I was I was about to literally pass out from anxiety before the show went on, and and uh, just because. It was just a it was just a big deal uh, happening and to be up there and hosting a, an award show and then at the end of end of the night to win uh, to win entertainer and, and and Blake you know being backstage and and it was just a it was just a ma an amazing moment I never will forget it and um, I, I never will forget you know winning a new artist out here too that was a big big moment for me you know a lot of um, you know that that gave me a, a great opportunity to turned some heads when I won new artists. So a lot of, lot of amazing memories through the years. 23 separate performances, each wow. with their own look, each with their own audio challenges, each with their own artist. The logistics of that, these guys go in and do a concert. You set up one band, you run the set. We have to do that 23 different times. We're in rehearsals for four days. We have a dress. We do the show twice. We do it for dress rehearsal that morning, three and a half hours, sometimes four it, ta it will take. And then we do the sh Everybody takes a, a couple of hours break, gets some rest, and does it again. So that's the, the main difference for us on a production side is the logistics attendant to getting everyone here, getting them to rehearse, and getting it on the screen. Most touring acts anywhere between 10 to 12 semis. We've loaded in to date about 136 semis in this building full of equipment. And then I think we had 30 semis come the other day to haul empty cases out. That's just hauling empty cases out of the building so we could move around. So when you look at the scale of it, it's, uh, it's enormous. It, to think on a concert, they'll roll into a city and load in that day. We started loading in on March 18th is when our first crews hit the ground here and started rigging. And we've been working double crews since March 18th. No other concert would do that. They come in the day before. So it's a, it, it, when, when you look at what it takes to build and put this in the building, it's just, it's just an enormous task. And when you compare it to any concert or any, like Luke or Blake's tour on the road, what, what we're putting in here is just a, a 146 truckloads of stuff. It, it, it's a lot of stuff. And one thing I'm most proud about is uh, Blake and I managed to build a bar in the bus <laughs> parking lot. I don't think you're supposed to talk That's about right. That. There's a whole we brought we for the first oh, time. Emma, I thought I was in trouble. Yeah, we 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 built a bar and we named it Luke's Bar. And and it's we big to us all the picture, we got yeah. we've got 90 buses coming. We've never been able to accomplish that in Las Vegas. We just don't have the space. But there's a bus compound for every artist. has it has its own store, bar, restaurant. I mean, it's its own village outside. And there's that, a basketball court, which Blake Blake won't be on that. They call me Hookshot Shelton. Just <laughs> let you know ahead of but, time. But I'm going to do this as a testament to Bob and the ACM staff. This is one event for them. There's a whole other event going on over at Globe Life. There are how many different events are you guys? I mean, there's like six or seven events. Not only are we doing this, they're also doing a festival. It's, it's just massive, you know, when the you undertaking. Put it, yeah, and when you put it in scale, when we made the announcement between the stadium, 
And the ballpark, you know, we sold 95,000 tickets in five, six minutes. It took the rest of the day just to clear out all the orders. So it's a pretty, that alone was a pretty amazing thing to deal with. And for those of you that haven't, for as impressed I think we are with AT&T Stadium and what we've done here, when you go to Globe Life Park, that's just as impressive. It's just a different feel because it's an outdoor festival type of feel. But, you know, we've got two major events going in the city of Arlington that's, uh, you know, bringing 95,000 people. And we know that 70% of those people are from out of the state of Texas. So that's a huge impact for the community, for Arlington, and for North Texas. So uh, there's a lot of things that will that will be happening this week. And in addition to those events, we, we've got the archery tournament that you're doing. We've got the Harley ride that uh, uh, Dirks Bentley is hosting. So it's just a lot of events. Any other stadiums I've played have been like the one in, whatever the one in Nashville is called, L LP, it's still Adelphia to me, but is it LP? <laughs> LP, LP, LP. LP, I mean, you know, the sound, you know, comes up from the stage and, and goes away, and in here, I mean, you could probably step in there right now and still hear, you know, George Strait singing a few notes from that <laughs> night uh, in 2008, I think it was, it was. Uh, and that was just, it was crazy to be inside but feel like you were, there was a world in there, you know? It's crazy. We couldn't have done this without the support of the artist. And, it, and Blake and Luke were two people that I sat with to just run the idea by, in addition to some other artists, to say, hey, what do we think about this as an artist community? So first thank you has to go to these guys and to all of the artists that are helping us for the, for the 50th. I think the other thank you really needs to go to Mayor Cluck, the city of Arlington. He was so instrumental in helping us get here and has been so supportive, as the new governor has been supportive. But most of all, the Jones family truly, I would say, are first class partners. And it's amazing to come to a facility for the first time and just feel so welcome. It's, uh, it's, it's just an incredible feeling. So. Definitely thank yous to all of those people because without their help, I don't think we would be here. But it definitely starts for, for us with our artists and their support and they're willing to help us do this. Without that, we, we wouldn't have an award show. So thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Jack, Brack, anything? I'll pass. <laughs> Just looking forward to Sunday night. I think it's a first of its kind event. And I think, as we said before, anything can happen. And with these two guys, it's gonna be a really fun and amazing evening. Okay. Tune in. Yes, tune in. tune in Sunday night, April 19th at 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 Central on CBS. Thank you guys for coming. Thank you. Good job, Lisa.